All right, guys. Should we now review She-Hulk? She-Hulk. Oh. Short episode. It was a short yeah. episode. Uh, She-Hulk, episode two, entitled Superhuman Law. Uh, we started out with the news reports kind of, you know, recapping what happened at the end of the, the first episode with uh, Jennifer hulking out in the courtroom. Um, and the news dubs her She-Hulk. Because, like, one of the guys was like, it was like a chick Hulk. And the, the reporter was like, you mean like a She-Hulk? Yeah. And then it turned into a thing. This reporter calls him the Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to get that. Yeah, I didn't get that either. <laughs> then you haven't watched one of the best cinematic classics in history. Um, so, like, then, like, you know, she's in her, like... Uh, at work and like there's a group of people like chanting like for She-Hulk outside so like she goes out and greets them and then she like ends up going to a bar with her friend Um, but they start talking to, actually about the name and she like talks about how she doesn't like the name and how it's like derivative of the Hulk and like they talk about how like even that's not a good name yeah well she goes into the bar as She-Hulk yeah, yeah. Um, there's like another like male lawyer that comes up to her and like accuses her of like doing this for like publicity, like as a publicity stunt. I couldn't quite hear what you're saying, but like she's blatantly like t- much taller than all of them, I guess. So yeah, he- and he says something about like how do you get those powers? Oh, it's nepotism from your cousin or whatever. Like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a weird line. So, like, as She-Hulk, like, she's drinking a bunch of alcohol. And, like, as we established in episode one, like, I guess when she's the Hulk, like, her metabolism is so fast that, like, she doesn't get drunk. Right. But then, like, her boss comes in and she, he's like, I need to talk to you. And he's like, can you please, you know, transform into Jennifer, you know, your regular self. So she shrinks down. But then, like, she instantly, like, falls to the ground. And, like, so apparently, like... The alcohol all hits her at once. Is that what you guys got out of that? Cause yeah, like, I guess it was like getting to her liver. Because she like <laughs> she like mentioned like you know her metabolism change in like an instant yeah. or something. Mm. So technically, like she could kill herself very easy with <laughs> yeah. alcohol poisoning if she wasn't careful, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I thought that was a little bit. Yeah, weird. it was a little random. Um, but basically, like her boss basically tells her like, "Hey, you did the right thing in there." Like saving the people or whatever and stopping the bad guy. But basically we have to fire you because a, like uh, they declared a mistrial and we lost the case and like B now you're just a liability to the law firm, which do you think um, she could have sued them for that? (laughs) Ironically. Yeah, probably. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So then we get this whole like, uh, montage. Because even if you get like a mistrial, don't you have to? Can't they still take you to trial? They just get like a new jury and stuff. I mean, that's what I thought. Is like when they declare a mistrial, it's not just like, oh, you win. It's like, oh no, now we're just gonna yeah get a you know a different trial with different chance. jurors yeah. and yeah, you get another chance. But um, so Jen uh, then goes to a uh, family dinner. And I, I wrote, her family is cartoonishly insufferable. <laughs> like, it's just like... I didn't really get any too much out of them. Not really. Like, some of them are, like, um, trying to... Oh, like, and I wrote this down somewhere. Like, one of them, like, talks about her hair. And I was curious about that. Why, when she changes into She-Hulk, does her hair go from curly to straight? I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. I think also, like, somehow the greenness makes her look less ethnic. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like... I mean, like, I don't know what her ethnicity is. I feel is more like she's a white woman with the uh, green paint on when she's She-Hulk. Green face. Yeah, green face. Um, oh, <laughs> I wrote... 
Her perfect stranger's dad then makes her feel better. Now, I'm not sure, but I think her dad is like the guy that, from Perfect Strangers that's Larry. not Valky. Yeah, Larry. Okay. I didn't look it up, but I was like... I thought he looked vaguely familiar, but I did not put that together. I was like, I didn't look it up, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's him, and I want to believe it's him. Yeah, good memory. <laughs> um, so then she goes to a, another bar, or maybe the same bar, I don't know, and this guy named Mr. Holloway approaches her. Um, and offers her a job, and he basically he was the lawyer on the other side of the case um, from episode one, and he's like, um, basically says like, before the we got the mistrial, like you were winning that case, and like that's hard to do against us. So he's like, he was like impressed by her. <laughs> that's like we, you're giving someone a compliment, but you also compliment yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Um, she accepts a job, but she says she gets to choose her, her own paralegal, and he's like, he doesn't care. So um, she, of course, hires her friend, who I think's name is Nikki, I think. Um, so anyway, she goes there, and then he drops it on her that they're creating a new division that's designed just to basically represent people with superhuman abilities, which – what did you guys think of this? Like, do you think this is something that would really happen in a world with like superpowered people? Like, they would have their own justice. System? I mean, that's a huge, uh, just um, like publicity. I, I think the publicity would be huge. Yeah, I, th- I think the government would definitely like want to use those people, so they'd probably try to protect them. And I mean, think of all the like skyscrapers Superman knocked down. He's gonna need some representation. <laughs> <laughs> I want you, you know, like those, like, were you involved in a an auto accident or whatever? Call Glinto and Stearns or whatever. You know, one of those cheesy ones. But I want one of those for like, yeah, like yeah. superpower. Like, yeah. did you knock down thirteen skyscrapers and kill ten million people? No. Call Glinto and Stearns. <laughs> I thought you were gonna be the like the other way, like yeah. the collateral damage people. <laughs> oh, yeah, that could. Did be- the whole throw your car <laughs> thirteen blocks <laughs> and miss? Uh, so yeah, like. So he's like, yeah, we want you to be the head of this. And he's like, so we want you to actually be She-Hulk. And he actually asks if she can change into She-Hulk. And so we kind of get this thing where she, uh, in this episode, breaks the fourth wall. Just to basically tell us that, like, she doesn't really, like, like that she has to do this or whatever. You know, she's uneasy about it. Um, Her and her friend are like. Uh, enjoying like her new office with the good view and like yeah she gets the big corner office but she has to walk past like well there's all these like uh, little like <laughs> men or assholes or whatever like there's a boardroom of old men like cheering and clapping or something and shaking hands <laughs> like she's like oh she did break the fourth wall and say some snide so comment there. about that and then there's like some guy comes up and gives her like a gift basket and he's like, here's the map to the toilet. I was just going to mention like, what this. The fuck is this. I was just going to mention this. So, yeah, this guy, and I had the subtitles on. His name is Pug, by the way. A pug? Pug. <laughs> pug greets her with a basket and a pooping map, I wrote. So, which, who does that? Like, yeah, this guy's like good, good looking, but like, who would hit on a woman and be like, that's the first thing they lead with is like, <laughs> he, 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 he wasn't like, you know, I'll map. just uh, let her figure. <laughs> we got your poop, man. <laughs> she was ecstatic. She was happy to have it. <laughs> yeah. <was> like, oh. <laughs> uh, that's not how I <laughs> I thought she was like all happy and everything. She's like, oh, poop map. <laughs> How'd she look? I don't know. If she said that, I was sarcastic. No, she didn't say that. She didn't say that. <laughs> I feel like, like if a new woman like started where I work. And the first thing I did was come up to her and be like, hey, uh, <laughs> like, here's a basket with fucking apples in it. And hey, if you want to take a shit, here's a map for <laughs> Like, oh. <laughs> like, like somebody is so condescending that they had to draw them out to the toilet. <laughs> and that person would automatically be, like, associated with poop in your mind from that point forward. Yeah. Do, do you think uh, her and Pug are going to have a, a romance in this show? They did kind of put him off on like a bad start. Like, hey, go give her this gift basket. She's going to want that map. I get, 
there's going to be a scene like where she's taking a shit and she breaks the fourth wall and she's like, this really is a good place to shit. <laughs> <laughs> or, or she's going to be like, <laughs> I really need to take a shit. Where's that gift bag? <laughs> Where's that mat? <laughs> <laughs> That's like the big thing. That, you know how they show like a, And then it just goes out onto like a balcony and the door locks behind her. What's that one? Oh, yeah, it'd be funny if the map le- led somewhere like she wasn't supposed to be. Mm. <laughs> what were you going to say? I can't even think of the name. Like there's something in, in movies which like when they show like a gun, they come back to it. And they like they they basically say like okay this gun's gonna be important later on in the show. Oh yeah, yeah. it's like a, a Star Trek thing like Chekhov's gun or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's what they're doing with this bathroom map. Maybe it's Chekhov's gun. For we the need big to pause <laughs> because it is called Chekhov's gun, and it is not related to Star Trek. Oh, it's not. I thought it was a Star Trek thing. No, there was an author named Chekhov. Oh. And he says you don't hang a gun on the wall unless you intend to use it. Oh, I guess the only context I ever heard check <laughs> off was Star Trek. And so I was like, oh, it's like probably... oh, put these hands together. I thought, I thought, well, I haven't seen most Star Trek shit. So I, I figured it was like a Star <laughs> must Trek have, thing. It must have been check off my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you see that happen? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I'm going to write a Star Trek thing now with Chekhov as a gun. <laughs> the gun, Captain. Yeah. You have to bring it back. <laughs> you don't hang a gun on the wall unless you have to use it. Um, okay, so now we find out, like, uh, Mr. Holloway tells Jen that her first case is going to be defending Emile Blonsky, a.k.a. Abomination. Um, she, of course, doesn't want to represent him because uh, way back in The Incredible Hulk, he tried, he fought and like tried to kill uh, uh, Bruce. So, uh, pause for just a second. So, like in the comics, somehow he injects Bruce's blood into himself. Honestly, like I don't even I don't even him. remember in the movie how it happened <laughs> because basically, Abomination is like this big green thing he turns into. It's not quite a Hulk, but it's like... Well, the Abomination isn't green, though. Like, isn't he white? It might be different versions. But, like, uh, that's why I was kind of asking you guys, because you've read more comics than I have. Uh, uh, Hulk's never a character I've gravitated towards, so I've never read much Hulk. But, yeah, he somehow gets a version of the serum. Okay. And it makes him big. Well, there's another thing, too, because before... um, well, we're about to get there, right? The where she decides to go interview him at the Supermax prison. Yeah, yeah, that's basically the next thing. The only thing before there is, um, she talks about how it'd be a conflict of interest, and the guy's like, "Oh, it's not a problem. We had him sign this conflict uh, waiver." Right. So anyway, she goes there to interview him, and basically, he's in one of these big acrylic cages. So it's basically looks like uh, Loki when uh, he was trapped in one of those on. A flying airship. <laughs> oh yeah, in the first Avengers movie, yeah. <laughs> but uh Um and there were some really shitty jokes about Hannibal Lecter or something. Right. I don't know. It didn't work, whatever it was. But uh I'm forgetting what point I was trying to get to now. She was going in to interview him and I was t- I don't know. I'm well, I'm blanking out. Well well basically I want to bide in here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll remember it. Basically, he kind of talks about how, like, his version is, like, number one, like, he's a different guy than who he used to be. And, like, number two, he was basically just following the government's orders. Right. So so he's Russian, but he was... Like, grew up in England. England. Yeah. But he was given, like, a serum, like, Captain America or something. So he was like a super soldier. Yeah, he mentioned like he thought he was going to be like the the next Captain America. Or okay, something right. Like that. And I, and I think yeah, God, again, it's been so long since I watched that Hulk movie, but like yeah, he he was like a soldier or something, and I think the government did end up like giving him the serum that turned him into Abomination. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um. And yeah, he has this whole thing where he's like, "Yeah, I'm a changed man, and now I've written, I, I've like apologized to the people that wronged me, and written haikus for all of them, and all this kind of stuff." Um, so Jen calls Bruce to see if he's okay with, uh, with her taking the case, which, and he is, but then, 
this part I was like, what the fuck? So we find out that Bruce is aboard that Sicarian spaceship yeah. from episode one. And I remember us talking like last week, we're like, well, Where this is. They go. Yeah. We're like the most interesting part of this was like the whole Sicarian spaceship thing and what's going to happen with this. Now it just seems like this is a, a a throwaway thing to where they're like, oh, well, this will be a different series or something. Yeah. Like this just seems like if. Uh, yeah, Hulk's off on a new adventure. It so. seemed like the most the thing that was interesting the most is now just going to be like in the future in a different show. Hulk, I I, I too thought he was going to be an important part and he's gone. <clears throat> I mean, they might bring him back. So I I mentioned this talked about this briefly but apparently like in the comics at some point hulk had a child yeah on sakar so we're kind of wondering if could he be like going back there to a son uh, yeah it because we don't like those years like the thor ragnarok and like he was in space for a while Right, it seemed like he was in a cell with the Grand Master or whatever, pretty much. Yeah, it does seem like there was but, like a period like, of time. Could, could he still have? But like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I don't know exactly you know the timeline. I don't know if he would have been there long enough to have a son or have you know. I don't know. Yeah, he was there for two years. It seemed oh, like he'd been years. there for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder like if maybe they eventually will do kind of like a a Hulk in space series or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. And there's like there's like other versions of Hulk out there, right? I heard there's like a God Hulk or something. Yeah, there's like there are other Hulks. There's like World War Hulk, and then there's like uh, well, World War Hulk was I, I I forget like in the comics. So so like at one point like the event like I think Hulk does something causes too much damage, so the Avengers basically send him into space, and then there's the storyline Planet Hulk where. I think that's where he has the sun and he kind of lives in outer space for a while and then eventually comes back to earth. And that's the world war Hulk storyline where like, then he like fights the Avengers or whatever, cause he's pissed for him, like banishing him into space or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I never, I think I read world war Hulk, but I never read planet Hulk, but it's been forever. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, the Illuminati, they sent him into space yeah. with like a ship. And then, you know, he has his whole family and life on Sakaar and then, uh, Something happens to the ship, and because of that, something happens to his wife on that planet because the mm. ship you know, exploded, basically. And uh, he thinks that the Illuminati are the reason behind that happening. So he goes back to Earth and then starts just beating the hell out of them. Is his, did his, is his son in the comics alive? Yeah, Sakar. Or her name is, his name is Scar. Scar. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let's see. So yeah, he they're interviewing him, and then uh, he kind of made himself look like maybe he's a, you know, kind of a, possibly an empathic character, but you, like you can't really tell which side he's gonna land on. That's how I felt. Which character? Uh, the abomination character. Mm. Like, is he like, you know, <clears throat> like is he just full of shit? Like, has he turned a leaf? Is is like. His story true, like his viewpoint is valid, where he did think he was like the hero and he's just kind of been cast in a weird ro role. Yeah, I guess like he does seem like he might be deceptive. Right, but it all, at the same time, it does seem like maybe he's lying. <laughs> right, right. Um, but anyway, Jen takes the case and then immediately the news comes on and it shows um, Abomination fighting in the fight club from Shang-Chi. Yeah. Now, my question is, because I couldn't tell... If it was like, oh, like he's he's in prison right now, but they just discovered this footage, so they know at times he's snuck out and did this fighting ring. Or if this is like current right now, like he's out of prison and he's in the fight ring. Well, I thought it was current, but that also raises some weird questions. I, I thought it was the past. Uh, yeah, I couldn't yeah. tell. So it's just like bad. Uh, but it seems like Wong is the one getting him out, right? Because he has the sling yeah. ring. Well, yeah, that's the thing. If, if he escaped from prison, Wong had to let him out. But like in Shang-Chi, it seemed like they had had a relationship, like kind of like a working relationship. Yeah, it seems like there would have to be a backstory there. Because why would um, Wong just randomly be like, oh, I'm going to break this 
bad guy out of prison. So we can fight in a cage. So we can do fake fights and get money, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how that's so going to patch together. So maybe, uh, I mean, Wong's going to be in the show at some point. So so maybe they will have that backstory of how those two got together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically that's how how the how it ends. And then did you guys watch the little uh, after credit sting? Oh yeah, you mean where? Uh, <laughs> Perfect. She, she fights glass ceiling man <laughs> <laughs> and finally breaks through because she has these new newfound manly powers. Well, I don't know if she broke the glass ce- ceiling because really it was just uh, Perfect Stranger's dad forcing her to do physical labor. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> carrying in the water, yeah, and stuff. like yeah, all that kind of stuff. OJ knows that that role, <laughs> carrying in the water. Oh yeah, <laughs> the five gallon jugs. <laughs> yeah, I know that life. <laughs> My dad made me do that too. <laughs> you got some quads going up all those stairs. <laughs> the quads, man. You got the calves, man. <laughs> got calves. I don't know why. <laughs> some people get calves. Mm. No, you you're being a bit like you know sarcastic about that, but do you think that's still a thing with like these female superhero properties where they're still b- maybe a bit ham fisted, fisted and inelegant about like about telling, not showing when it comes to like um, portraying female heroes as like you know badass and like can do all the th- things the men can do. Well, I mean, they also have so many much stuff like it's kind of like eighties ish, but um, I think there is a little bit of that. But it's also you have female writers, so some of them are probably bringing some real world experience into this, in even if it's maybe you know a little bit weird or something. Um, what I what I feel kind of weird about is I feel like it kind of takes away potential story or character arc because you basically have to come across and say you know you're we, the women's infallible and all these guys are wrong so they're they're subtle bad guys but it's also like it's not enough to create a big enough conflict to be interesting i don't know i, I get what you mean like even in like episode one where like she's at the bar and like, there's the guys like cat calling here. They're, they're very on the nose, like right. But there, there's no, there's no gray, right. Know? And I'm, I'm just kind of like, is every time she ever interacts with a male, it's, it has to be like a condescending thing. Like, do I really have to sit through that every time? I mean, it's, it's, it's too much. It's like it's just, I don't like watching it. You know, I thought the first Wonder Woman movie did a, a very good job of not beating you over the head and, like, showing you that she's powerful. Just, like, the, you know, that visual of, like, her in the no man's land with her shield, like, blocking the bullets. And, like, I thought it did a very good job of, of not, like, being really, like, ham-fisted about it. And then that, That's another thing. If you are, like, superpowered, like, you have no reason to give a shit what anybody thinks. And then there's, you know, like the Captain Marvel movie, which is a movie I liked and I like her and everything, but there was definitely like kind of eye rolling moments in that movie too, where I'm like, ah, they're trying too hard. Right. You're like the most powerful being in the universe. It's like, okay, <laughs> I don't know. why are we, uh, so yeah, I, I kind of hope check. in the future, like, like I'm all for having the more female superheroes, but I do think they may be. They need to be a little more subtle in, in that storytelling. Well, I think it can even work if you just pick out like one or two people and make them pieces of shit. But it's like, oh, like every single person is a piece of shit in this world. <laughs> Here's your poop, man. <clears throat> I'm sorry. But also like the character arc you're saying like, yeah, maybe if one of these, you know, characters start off to where maybe like they're taking a little more shit from men or something and then like over time like they they become more assertive i don't know well that would just wouldn't I, I mean, have to apply to every female character but isn't isn't mousy although she could have been but you, you do kind of see like a transition i feel like of um personality like as, as she hopes she does seem more confident 
which is supposed to be the same person. So I don't know. I feel a little bit weird. Something. I, I feel like same. sometimes the writing of these shows feels like too defensive. Like, like they almost assume the people watching are shitty. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, no, like I get, I get women are, are powerful and like, you don't need to like be quite as defensive as you're being like, we, we get it. Like, yeah, you can, you can, you can tone that down a bit. You don't have, you know, but yeah, it did feel like a conscious decision to, to tackle those things. But I don't know. It is just kind of very, yeah, I guess it might say ham fisted. Yeah, just uh, maybe a little on the nose at points, but um, a little more open to it. I've I've heard like women on TikTok and stuff, and they talk about how like you know they go through that stuff all the time, where like men are like saying these things to them and like talking to them a certain way. So, I mean, I'm not in their shoes. I maybe they go through it a lot more than we think, and it really is that much of a hassle. Like you know, they really deal with that negativity all the time. No, yeah, it could be. Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't know, you watch some of these shows and you're, you, sometimes it feels like you're being preached to in a way you don't need to be. Mm. I think pre, that's like the second rule of writing is don't be preachy. I think maybe that's what it is, slightly preachy. I mean, it's not super over the top, but it's present. Right. So, I mean, I, I think as, as we get more of these shows um, centered around female superheroes, I'm I'm hoping that levels out a little bit, and we, you know, there's other story. Like I'd I'd rather, right? There's other stories to tell. There's, right. there's yeah, better stories to tell. I think, and I, I guess some female writers would probably say, well, that's a the way men treat us is an ever present part of our life. So maybe it should always be in these stories to an extent, but it's boring. It gets it gets monotonous if it's too to there all the time. Like I said, well, if you had like one boss character who was like an asshole and masochistic, I, I feel that's maybe more of a representation because there are like a handful of shitheads anywhere. I did like that her boss that like fired her still seemed like a good guy. Mm-hmm. Like, like the guy who hired her though is more like <laughs> advantageous. Yeah, he right. like he's just using He's like, her. we're going to cash in on this. Yeah. Right. The other guy did seem stupid for, like, letting her go, though, so. Well, he seemed like he didn't have a choice, though. Maybe. Well, he said, like, the DA's office was having issues with it or something. There was, there was some line there yeah, to justify like it. was a well, conflict you just, of we'll interest. Well, just say, fuck it, you're off that case. We'll give you, you know, we've got 400 rape cases sitting over here. You can work on those. But really, like, she has the ability to transform at will. And it's like, how many cases do they think they're going to get? Where a fucking supervillain Kool Aid man's through the wall, <laughs> like <laughs> I think that would be a rare occurrence. And if it does, like you want a She Hulk there to <laughs> wait. That can't be why they want her. Like just because she can like stop supervillains from like doing stuff. Well, I think this new firm wants her because like they specifically have this superhuman division, so it doesn't matter if she's She Hulk. And the fact that she's a lawyer just is like a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the old firm that fired her, I'm like, I'm not sure that makes sense because like the chances of that happening again, like it did in episode one, are very slim. And besides that, like imagine how much money they could drum up if they used her as She-Hulk in in like their legal ads. Yeah, it was just Mm -hmm. stupid. So yeah, I don't, I think you're right. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, even as a company mascot, she would probably be like she'd be awesome. Valuable, yeah. yeah, like even if they're like, honestly, like if they're like, okay, you can't lawyer anymore, but we're gonna pay you more just to be our fucking like spokesperson. Mm-hmm. But like, she, she wouldn't be happy with that. Yeah, well, yeah maybe fulfilling. But she gotta bring the law. <laughs> she'd be rich. She gotta bring justice to the land. <laughs> um, I don't think I like this episode overall as much as episode one, but. It, It'd be close, I guess. I didn't like it, but I I felt like uh, Tim Roth has promise, so it gave me a little bit of hope. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I just, uh, you know, they haven't introduced Wong and other characters yet, and I I think there's a, you know, there's a lot to be, to look forward to in this. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm optimistic. I'm I'm still probably in, like, you know, six out of ten range. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't hate it. Uh, I'm I'm still hoping it gets better, 
but um, I, I am kind of curious, like it being a nine episode series, like if if most of the episodes are going to be around this length, because this was a short episode. This was like thirty minutes with credits, so probably like the actual episode was like you know twenty some minutes right. long. It, like it went by pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah Ajay and I were talking about this, but we were also talking about how like their overall story structure that they're doing with like these series is wrong because you've got like two or three where it's all set up and basically you're, you're watching a full movie of nothing. But, and then like you kind of cross your fingers and say like, well, hopefully this finishes out better than it started because it started like shit. But I mean, if you think of something like breaking bad, like the first 30 seconds, you are like hooked and it goes on for season after season after season. And you're just like, you can't stop watching. And so uh, I I, th- I think they're really missing the ball as far as writing goes in some of those in some of those manners. Yeah, and if it's going to be this slow, drop the whole series at once, you know. Let us watch get past those slow episodes and get to the meat of the the series. Well, know? the structure is wrong. They just need to jump into it and just knock it out episode after episode after episode because what they're doing right now is just it's wrong. It it's not smart. It's it's just got a bad structure. I got to say, though, is like a murder mystery fan. I wish she was defending like I wish there was a murder mystery component to this. Like she was defending like a superpower person that was accused of murder, but was, who was like actually innocent. And like, I, I mean, that could be great. I mean, but what if like for episode one, you open up on some like. You know, maybe something a bit ambiguous, and you do have like a villain there, and you do have like dead people around, and like you don't necessarily explain it. You have a mystery. Now you've hooked people in. You've got something. You know, you can reference back to backstory. You can build on it. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do there, but they're they're just not right. I totally agree. Like if the, if there was a a, um, a central mystery to the show, it would hook me in a lot more. It would go a lot further. I gotta say, like. You told me this and I read it too. So there was like a quote from like the writers of the show where they're like, we realized we weren't really good at writing courtroom drama. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, okay, I'm not expecting yeah, them where to, are you going like, <laughs> like basically their story is going to be more the stuff that's not in the courtroom. But I'm like, it seems like, it seems like that the courtroom drama part of it probably isn't all that compelling. And then, and yeah, like, <sighs> That is one of those things I think is a specialty. So if they were going to do it, they probably should have brought in somebody who was good at that particular thing. Let's get some Perry Mason up in this book. Yeah. <laughs> well, who's that author who who wrote all those books, like The Firm and stuff? Grisham? Might have been Grisham. He's one of them. But, I, I mean, there's a handful of people out there who are really good at that stuff. But it's a pretty small pool to draw from, I think. But, yeah, I would... I wish there was some sort of mystery surrounding it. Whoever wrote My Cousin Vinny. (laughs) God, that's a movie I haven't seen in ages. Man, I I couldn't believe Marissa Tomei won an Oscar for that movie. That's wild. Yeah, like, it's, it's, like, it's a good movie, but yeah, you wouldn't think that'd be the movie she won for, you know? Yeah. I do. My favorite scene in that movie, though, is you know how like he keeps moving because he can't get a good night's sleep, and like there's always some noise, and then he's like in that cabin and you hear an owl hoot, and he just comes out and is like shooting. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say where he goes, where he gets put in prison, and he just like, falls straight asleep. <laughs> no, I, but the, yeah, there was the owl part is the one that got me. <laughs> straight to shooting. <laughs> Um, guys, any final thoughts on this episode of She-Hulk before we wrap things up? I just hope that's the end of setting it all up, yeah. and now we can get into the, the real story. Into something. But, uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. We'll see what the whole mystery behind uh, the abomination is going on here. I mean, if they got uh, the one guy from per- Perfect Strangers, do you think we could get some Bronzo- Bronson Pinchot? Uh, in a later episode, <laughs> bring him back. He could be a supervillain. <laughs> he could be like a lawyer on the other side or something. <laughs> in my country, <laughs> <laughs> my rating for this show is going up. <laughs> 
by the way, um, remember when you guys promised that if we get to a thousand subscri- subscribers, we'll review each and every episode of uh, Lois and Clark: The New Adventures of Superman. No, that's one of the you, you guys where you stated. No, like, you, it's you, not you guys, true. you guys promised. <laughs> so when that happens, and um, we can look forward to that because Bronson Pinchot plays the trickster in a couple episodes. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about taking drugs? <laughs> drugs? When you're high on Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman. <laughs> yeah, that's when you, you know don't it's time to take drugs. mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to start loading up on that mushroom. I mean, no, because that would only lessen the experience. It's all, You're already in a high when you're watching that show. <laughs> I saw that Christmas episode, and I'm telling you, I thought I was high. <laughs> <laughs> There's some wacky stuff in that show, but it's all fun. <laughs> It's all fun. Mm. All right. So, everybody, <laughs> uh, what did you think of this episode of She-Hulk? Please comment down below and let us know. By the way, I should have looked it up, but there was a guy who left a positive comment on our She-Hulk episode one, and he said, keep up the good work. I liked oh, his comment. it. Thank you. Yeah, I, went in, I, saw, I saw that, and I was like, I'll like your comment. All good, right. sir. We appreciate it. Not enough to write your name down and give you a shout out. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> I think um, it was like Mr. Lasso or something like that. I, I remember it was like, yeah, something underscore something. <laughs> but anyway, um, please leave your own comments, and, and, and uh, good or bad, and, and maybe we'll even read them on the show. Um, please subscribe both to the YouTube channel and to your podcast service of choice. Um, like I said, leave us comments, thumbs up, give us positive reviews uh, that help us in the old algorithm, all that good stuff. And why not come over and start a conversation with us on Twitter? Uh, guys, where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, a name for this, too, and that's the number two. At Unsolicited S-U-G. And you can, of course, find me at Zach Jones Live. That's Z-A-C-H-J-O-N-E-S-L-I-V-E. And that is going to do it for all of our shenanigans in the poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Have a good one.